This short screencast is to introduce you to the features of EndNote. In this screencast, I'll be looking at EndNote itself. In the next screencasts, I'll be showing how you, how you use it to search PubMed, and finally, to insert references into a document. But let's start by having a look at EndNote itself. This is an EndNote library, and you can think of an EndNote library as a card index. All of these references are index cards if I double-click one, you can see that the index card contains information that you'd expect. Those are the authors, the year of publication, title, the journal, publication details. These are the things you would have put on a typed index card back in the old days when people used them. Down here we have more interesting information. Here are keywords. These are keywords that were retrieved from PubMed when I downloaded the reference from PubMed. Downloading references from PubMed means that you automatically get the PubMed keywords, which is very helpful for searching the literature. If you can, download your references rather than typing them by hand. Here's the abstract. And finally, the uh, notes include uh, details of authors. And um, down here, we have the author's email address. This can be very useful in contacting the author. It's not always evident on the PubMed search that you do, but EndNote generally manages to download one. Here we have a URL. This is a URL that will link us back to the original PubMed page on which this article was found. That can be very useful for checking if you've access to a reprint or for finding related articles. And finally, here's an attached file. I actually have a PDF of this and it's attached to the record. This record is marked as a journal article. You can see that you can also use EndNote to index books, sections of books, computer programs, edited books, many types of reference. And EndNote knows how to format these when it goes to generate a bibliography. Down at the bottom, I can see a preview of my article. It's previewed in Vancouver style. That's the standard style for the medical literature. I could also show you, for example, how it would appear in social science and medicine. There it is there. Or how it would appear in Harvard style, which is one of the styles that's frequently used in theses. There's one style I'd draw your attention to, which is annotated. It's not a real bibliographic style. No journal ever uses it. But annotated style shows you in the preview pane the abstracts of the articles. This is very useful for looking through articles that you've downloaded from a PubMed search. There we are. So we can read the abstracts as well in, by setting the style to annotated. Finally, over at the side here, you see that you can create smart groups. I have a lot of references here. And a smart group allows you to collect together references that meet particular criteria. For example, this smart group is where any field in the record contains the words loneliness or the word network. So when I add new references that contain either the word loneliness or the word network, they're added to this smart group. As you can see, loneliness and networks has 251 references where happiness and there's happiness. Any article that contains the word happiness or well-being has only 24 references.